My name is Jesse Webb. I am a preacher first, and I'm a hairstylist. I've been in Austin, um, be 10 years, September 6th. September 6th. The next morning, after the storm had passed, everything was pretty kind of, it was cool. You, everybody was going outside to see exactly what was torn up. I don't know how many hours you, you can hear the kind of bump from the, from the levee. We didn't know that's what it was. You can hear it. It almost sounded like someone might hit a brick wall. But I was in the sixth ward, and you have the ninth ward, which is here. I'm here. Then you have the seven and eight ward. So the water's coming pretty fast to us. And some of us still wasn't taking it too serious because we didn't know where the water was coming from. Um, and like I said, our house is set up a little higher, so you couldn't tell de actually how deep it was. Whew. Um, it's kind of how you think about it. Like, it's almost like reliving it. So the National Guard or the Army said, well, go to the convention center. There's no one over there, and they got food and shelter. So we get there, and I'm like, wait a minute. There's nothing over here. And so there was no food. There was no water. And then you won't let us leave. They literally would not let us leave. Um, I don't know why. They sell us for our protection, but they would not let us leave. So we get there, and the first day, man, it was just like chaotic. People were doing some crazy things, like... It was like, it was almost like you're in a movie and you want to wake up and see what's really going on. They say the body goes into survival mode. I just, I was just trying to figure out what we're going to do. Because it really felt like you was going to die. You, you're left there to die. That's what it felt like. Day four or five. Day four or five. I still never kind of got these days right to this day. Um, this, the National Guard, the Army, whoever came in, they brought us food and they brought us water. Um, you have people walk around to I put your name on this list, we're gonna help y'all. I just remember landing in Austin, which we thought was actually San Antonio. And we didn't know we were in Austin. And they said, no, you're in Austin. They took us to the convention center. And I think that's when it hit me, because I just started crying. I'm like, wait, where's my family? Where's my, because I'm helping, you know, being, trying to help you out. And I'm like, where's my family? And I just couldn't stop crying. And it was like a, a big, unorganized, unclean slumber party. It was just like people were everywhere. I think the experience of Katrina just taught me a whole lot about um, life period and um, how we deal with people and how you treat the people in your lives. I just. It gave me a whole different perspective, even from my spiritual side, um, just all the way around. Just it's, it was it was a very eye opening. I'll never forget it, never ever ever, because you have people now saying, "Well, that was ten years ago. Y'all need to be over." I said, "Well, you don't know what it feel like to be left for dead, literally, and, and the seeing people killed. Uh, right now, there's people that you were friend with all your life. You don't know where they at. They're just gone." But this year is just really, um, I would really like, I don't know if I can to just close the book kind of sort of because I never get a chance to, um, this is probably the most I ever talk about my experience because I'm always dealing with other people's things. So that's why I was really glad to be able to just say some of the things that have really just been inside of me because nobody didn't even know what happened to me while I was there, you know. So the way I'm living here now, I don't think I would ever got there in Louisiana. Um, I think I, I love Austin now. I, I, I miss Louisiana, but I love Austin. This all came from me coming here and having a second chance, and that's what I call it. And I just took full advantage of having a second chance, I think, at life, period.